building on the left was about to be hit by the hijacked incoming plane. Untold death and destruction. The top floors collapsed down. When the terrorists targeted the World Trade Center in New York, this is the west side of the Pentagon, the heliport side off of Washington Boulevard. In the Pentagon in Washington, the attack was on all America. I talked about it with former Miami Valley Congressman Dave Hobson at his home in Springfield. I, will not go off I took him back to his time in Congress. 20 years ago, we talked about it often in the weeks and months that followed the attacks. Now, looking back, he remembers being on the floor of the U.S. House when the second plane hit the World Trade Center. I think all of our lives changed on that day. A short time later, a third plane hit the Pentagon and set it on fire. We were mad that somebody would have the audacity to kill people on airplanes and into buildings. A fourth plane crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, forced down by heroic passengers as it was headed to the U.S. Capitol. An F-16 from the Springfield Air National Guard base was scrambled to help secure the skies, but did not engage any aircraft. On 9-11, I remember driving all day long to Washington, D.C. with photographer James Robinson. When we got there, it was very, very eerie. The streets were completely quiet. No flights up above. The next day, members of Congress were trying to figure out their next step. We were mad and we were confused. Former Miami Valley Congressman Tony Hall and I talked on Zoom about what came of the aftermath of the attacks. He was at his home in Virginia. We've got a lot of briefings from not only the military, but from the intelligence uh, community. And we wanted to know who did this. Later, the 9-11 Commission found terrorist Osama bin Laden was behind the attacks, and the two of the four planes actually flew over Ohio on their way to their targets. A year later, I was in New York for the first anniversary of 9-11 with New Center 7 anchor Jim Baldrige. The scars are still visible to those. People were still flocking to ground zero to see the damage. The rebuilding began and the nation mourned the loss of so many people. Today we remember each life. For a while, Congress put politics aside. When we have to come together, we do come together. You know, there's no such thing as Republicans and Democrats fighting. We do come together when it's when it's necessary. Two decades later, the U.S. just recently left its involvement in Afghanistan and the war on terror. Both Hall and Hobson criticize U.S. nation building efforts. Hall says our military stayed there much too long and the U.S. made the same mistake in multiple countries. We did it in Somalia. We did it in Iraq. We do it in Afghanistan. Go in, go after the terrorist, get them, kill them if necessary, and then get out. Hobson adds, there's no going back after the terror attacks from the security changes we see at airports to our thinking about our own national security. Certainly 9-11 is ingrained on everybody who, was, who could recognize what happened that day. It'll be with them forever. And on the upcoming 20-year anniversary of 9-11, the nation will once again be mourning the loss of the victims and remembering the survivors. Jim Otte, New Center 7.